Today's video has three halves to it. The first half, we're going to basically take a look at the chair, make some repairs on it. I talk about a few things and my thoughts and experience working on some of these models. And then the second and third half, we're basically testing the chair out in a parking lot and then in the house as well. As always, time codes are down below. YouTube has the new chapters feature so you can easily skip around through this video. It's definitely long, but the chapters feature takes care of that and makes it fairly easy to deal with. Hopefully you enjoy. Apparently there's a delay of about four or five days. When I uh, dumped out of the C300 that I put those big tires on, I felt fine for the first day or two, but now <laughs> I'm a little bit sore. I'm glad it was on grass and not concrete or something. Anyways, I got a new chair in the fleet a couple days ago. It's something I've always kind of wanted to check out. This is an Invacare, oh, what is it? It's a TDX series of some kind. Uh, I think it's a TDX SP. I've really wanted to look into these systems, but this one has a head array. And I've been playing around with the thing a little bit and sort of getting it sorted out. It was a used chair that someone donated. They upgraded to a newer one and didn't need this thing anymore. So, here we go. TDX SP, it's got the head array. It's got an attendant control here, which comes out. And I think usually there's a mount that this can go on on the back. It's got Invacare's version of the Omni to control everything. But this thing uses proximity switches. You actually don't have to physically touch the sensors. There's three of them. There's one in the back, one on the left, one on the right, and then there's a chin switch here. And that's used for switching through the different menus and modes and things on the chair. Now I've already done a little bit of work on this thing. I've taken off some of the armrests that were on here and worked on tightening up some of the armrests and things like that. I haven't messed with the wiring too much yet though, but as you can see, these chairs that use head arrays have a lot of wires and a lot of extra modules and things on them to control everything. This is an ASL head array setup. Uh, it's one of the three switch ones. I'm going to kind of go after some of this wiring and get it tidied up a little bit. Oh, I just noticed the whole thing is leaning to the right just a little bit. Eh, well, it's probably an adjustment that's not too hard to fix. But I think what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go through all of this wiring and sort of tidy things up a little bit. I also took off the cover down there. But yeah, it came with an extra head array module as well got that one over here. This one doesn't have the mount for the chin switch on it though. Uh, this does work. I've actually hooked it up and tested it. But it connects through this uh, multi-pin cable here to that interface box. I've run around on the thing for probably a total of about three minutes so far and I know there's probably some of you out there watching that use head arrays but I have some questions. These things seem really sketchy. Mostly it seems like you only have one speed. The chair is programmed, you bump your head back, and it goes basically full on to the speed that it's set, and you can't modulate the speed. Now, this MK6i module does have the SD card slot here on the side, and I have been playing around with the programming a little bit. Um, these get dangerous in a hurry if you turn up the speeds. But I did find a setting that said ASL Digital 3 speed. Not sure what that is. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get this wiring cleaned up, uh, kind of get it, get some of the covers and stuff put back on, use a whole bunch of zip ties. And I've got a couple different programs on an SD card. And I'm going to take this thing out to a parking lot somewhere where there's a lot of open space. And we're going to play around with this and kind of show you guys how head arrays work if you're not familiar. And, um, well... At this point, my feeling is it's better to be able to use them and move around at all, even if it's super annoying, as opposed to not being able to. So, yeah, if you do use a head array and you do have a system that allows for multiple speeds without switching through the menus and whatnot, or some way to be able to modulate using your head position, I'd be really interested to know about it. I'm going to get a little bit of work done on this thing, then I'll show you when we're done. We're going to load it up in the white van. I actually need to drive it. 
I've been trying to sell the white van, but the DMV is still closed. So it makes it a little tricky to get the paperwork and stuff to do that, but it needs to be driven. So we're gonna load this thing up into that van. It's a lot easier to get an extra chair into that van than it is the new one, the way the layout of everything is on it. We're gonna go play around with this thing and uh, we're gonna learn some stuff because I've always been really interested in these systems and I'm not 100% sure how they work. Um, definitely need some exploration. <laughs> All right, about an hour later, I've gotten some cable management done on this thing. Um, we've gotten to a point where I'm just gonna say it's good enough. Uh, I would like to do something different with this down here, and there's a lot of extra cable on these things. But there's actually this little clamp up here that holds the stack of connectors, and they were just floating down here before. So I was able to get that reinstalled, and there's cable guides for each thing. And then I just sort of wound everything around, uh, got them to about the proper length, our head array plugs in right here, and that's easily removable. So that can come off the chair, and there's two connections for that. Right now, I'm focusing on the controller area down here. There's a couple things I wanted to point out on these that goes for almost any Invacare chair. This back cover goes on here sort of like this, and there's three screws. There's one on each top corner, and there's one on the bottom. Now, the one on the bottom is on this sort of little swiveling screw thing uh, and that can be kind of tricky sometimes to reinstall I'll show you how to deal with that in a minute but the main thing I wanted to point out was these little captive screw holders right here for each corner this one and this one you've got to be really careful when you're putting the screws in because on a lot of these chairs these are not stamped in here very well so you want to get them just tight enough to hold the cover if you over tighten them these things will start free spinning and then you'll never get them back out very easily they're also a pretty fine thread, uh, small bolt. I'm not sure what the thread is on these. I'm fairly sure it's metric, but don't lose these screws. They're kind of hard to find. Now, the way this chair set is set up, it doesn't have like a seating controller. The way Invacare deals with some of these that don't have like the motion concept system on them is they have individual boxes for each seat function. Now this chair has power legs, power tilt, and power recline. The recline and the tilt are handled by these two modules right here. Actually, no, this one module here handles the tilt and recline, and we've got the outputs to the actuators. Uh, it's in this big bundle here. This box over here is an interface for the ubiquitous unlabeled blue buttons. I'm sure if you, uh, I'm sure if you've ever had an Invacare chair, I'm sure if you've ever had an Invacare chair, you've had buttons like this. These are the ones where you have to push and hold and then wait, count to two, push again to reverse direction. So these top two buttons are responsible for tilt and recline. The bottom two are actually controlled by the chair controller itself because the controller has one output and they've connected that to the legs on this one. So we've got legs up and legs down, two separate buttons for that. And the leg controller is independent of all this. It basically connects down here directly to the accessory port on the module. Now what we've got here, the MK690 with accessories. So this thing has built-in accessory outputs on it and we're just using the power legs for that. Something else to keep in mind with these Invacare chairs, a lot of this wiring is down here pretty low, so it can easily hang out the bottom of the chair and uh, get caught on things on the ground. And these controllers are just sort of mounted in here with these rubber bushings, so they sort of snap down into place but what I'm gonna do right now is they've got little zip tie points around, but I'm gonna get the motor controllers and I'm gonna run zip ties around here and here to hold all this wiring in and also to make sure it's not gonna fall down and drag on the ground. Our main output from the batteries is right here that goes down to the controller. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna add some zip ties here real quick and then I'll show you how to put these rear covers back on. And while I'm down on the floor doing things with these chairs, I always like to just reach in here and clean all the dust and everything off. You just get a little bit of accumulation of dust on areas that are kind of hard to reach. So if you are sitting on the floor, it never hurts to just go around all this stuff and clean all the dust that's inevitable off of everything. I'm a little bit OCD with chairs when it comes to things being dusty and dirty, but a lot of it isn't exactly preventable. So any opportunity I get to clean stuff up, I always like to do it. And by the way, I would like to mention, I don't know if the person that I got this chair from is watching or not, but um, this is actually one of the cleanest chairs I've come across. 
for how old this thing is and how much it's been used, um, it is in really clean condition. Um, it, it takes a lot of work to keep stuff from building up. I mean, it, I, I constantly use the air compressor to blow out the cushions on my chair and probably once or twice a week, I'm always scrubbing on stuff. It's just one of those things that you can't prevent. So, um, yeah, good work with this one for sure. Okay, I think I've figured out why this chair is leaning. These Invocators use a series of bolts uh, to hold the, uh, the seating onto the power base. Some of them are slotted and some of them have holes. If you notice right here, right above this very rear bolt, see how you can see a little gap right here? And then if you look at this side, you can see the slotted gap is on the bottom. Oh, these aren't even tight. Holy cow. Now, I like to be careful with this stuff, but I am going to say this did have new motion stickers all over it. And I'm not making generalizations about everyone, anyone being terrible or whatever, but there's things like this where there's loose bolts that connect the seating to the chair. Um, anytime the chair is worked on, it really should have this stuff looked at. It takes like 90 seconds to check all these bolts out. And I'm noticing now too that the mounting right here for the seating is also crooked. See how we have, see how we have a gap up here and we've got an overhang back here. So that's resulting in the whole chair tilting to the right and also listing to the left. And <laughs> these bolts are not even tight enough, not even tight enough to bind up those washers. So we're gonna stick this rear cover back on real quick and then I'm gonna go ahead and adjust all that stuff and we should be able to get this tilting thing taken care of. Also with the wiring on the back of this, I know they get really complicated and there is there is not a way to avoid all the wires on a chair with a head array, especially one of these older ones that is running a serial communication network. The newer CAN bus stuff, you have a lot less wires. You don't have to have all the independent modules. But on these older ones, um, you really have to stick with the cable management. And anytime you do a repair on it, you've got to put the stuff back and kind of plan stuff out. Again, kind of case in point with some of the people that work on chairs. All the stuff was just hanging out here. All these main connectors, uh, these ones that are now up here in the bracket where they belong, those are just hanging out. And if any one of those comes loose or anything like that, especially when you have a stack of like eight or nine of those things, any bump in the road or anything can potentially make those come loose. And especially with a head array, if you've got latch driving set up, that can get real dangerous real fast because you may not be able to stop the chair. So things like that, I just wish that people were paid enough and trained enough to be able to take the time and go through all this. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just saying like, you know, hey, I'm sure they're underpaid and they're in a rush and they've got so much work to do. I'm not making excuses, but at the same time, it would be nice to see a little more attention to detail on some of this stuff. Okay, time to, rest, uh, time to install this rear cover. Now, the stock screws are fairly short. All I could find, uh, the bottom screw was missing. All I could find was this one that's a little bit longer than it should be. Uh, so one thing I have to be careful about here is this is going to poke through and mash into these wires. So I'm going to make sure these are sort of pushed back out of the way where the screw is not going to be like, you know, drilling holes in them as I put it in there. Got my favorite Phillips screwdriver here. This thing has been with me since like, I don't know, 2005. <laughs> okay, so you want to make sure your caster wheels are pointing out like this. And then you want to sort of uh, fold this thing up so it's not completely flat pointing backwards, but just kind of forwards. And then we're just going to set our cover in here like this. And then you can get your screw and sort of use your finger to feel around on the back here. And you can get this bottom screw started. There we go. Now it's engaged and our cover has sort of a little swivel type thing going on. So we'll just kind of leave that loose and then we'll we'll get this top part up here, push it into place. And then these are very recessed. The screwdriver has to be at least that long to get down in there. And then we'll just basically get our screw in here first, get it pushed through the hole. And then we can sort of feel around until we find those threads. Okay, just got it started. Now we're gonna get the other one started. These things are real easy to cross thread too, and uh, cross threading will result in those little screw um, and those little screw plugs coming loose. Okay, so we got the thing on here all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this screw down. There we go. 
I'm gonna feel under here just to make sure that that screw is not interfering with the wires. All right, looks like we're good. And now we can tighten up these ones, just till they're snug. You don't wanna go tight at all. I don't know how many of these chairs I've worked on where I went to remove these and they just wouldn't come out because that captive screw holder has come loose. All right, there we go. Got our rear cover on here. Man, I don't like that wiring right there for the for the power legs, but I think it'll be all right. All right, so that's how you put the rear cover back on one of these things. I'm gonna get back up in my chair and we're gonna deal with the top part of this now. Actually, I lied, while I'm still on the floor, we're gonna get this seating adjusted real quick. Basically, all I'm gonna do is loosen up all these bolts on this side over here and the whole thing will kind of settle down into place. I believe these are half inch or 13 millimeter. So I'm gonna carefully loosen these up. You gotta really watch your fingers because uh, this thing's gonna potentially move suddenly. Oh, I figured it out. Look, the bolt's in the wrong spot. Um, so this rear mount here isn't actually a full slot. They have several holes with uh, little pieces of metal holding them in place. So whoever put this on, put this wrong, put, put this screw in the wrong hole. So I'm gonna back this out completely, then we'll move it up there. And that's gonna take care of our issue. Wow, so this thing's been this way. I wonder how long it's been that way. That's crazy. Okay, so I'm reaching up and I'm holding up on the back of the chair and I'm gonna unscrew this by hand. Then we're gonna let it drop down here. One hole, and then we can put this bolt back in. <laughs> That's crazy. This thing must have been that way since, well, pretty much forever. Wow. It's not crooked anymore. Okay, so like I was saying, not making excuses, but apparently someone was in a hurry. And, um... This thing has been leaning to the right since day one. Wow. All right, that's all been taken care of. What I'm gonna do right now is loosen up these four bolts. There's two on each side, and we're gonna get this offset on the seat that is clearly crooked taken care of. You just basically loosen these, move the seat so it's straight, and tighten it back down. Also, this ASL interface box, it's only got one screw holding it on, so it sort of wobbles around here. This other screw hole, didn't line up with this, plus this bolt is too big. So what I might do... Yeah, I might actually make another bracket for that at some point. For now, just for testing, it's fine. Um, as it jiggles, it's not really putting any strain on the wires. Um, but if this was someone's chair that they were actually going to be using, that would need to be addressed. Okay, we got the thing put back together now, and I think... We are pretty much ready to load up, go to a random parking lot, and test this thing out. There's some different programming options I want to try. I've got the, I think it's inside still, but I got the SD card set up. I've got two different programs on it right now, and then we're going to test that. Then I'll upload the SD card, and we'll be able to see what that does. Should be interesting, though. Oh, also, the, um, the mounting for this thing. This really needs to be fixed. The The cover is like pushing up against it and sort of like flexing it out of the way. Um, yeah, that was that was a half-baked installation right there for sure. But uh, yeah, I think, um, I think we're good. Okay, we've arrived at a random industrial area. We've got some hills and things over here, so I think that might be useful. By the way, it just barely fits through the door with this head array on there. Um, yeah, let's get unloaded and um, well, hopefully we won't make safety happen today, but it should be interesting nonetheless. So one of the other things I did find out as well, you can independently adjust the profile that's used for this attendant control in relation to the head array. So the next program I put on here is gonna make this a little bit more sensitive. The way these work on these chairs is you have this knob here on the bottom that you can turn and that enables the attendant control. And then your speed adjustment is controlled by how far you turn this dial. So that basically puts it into attendant mode and you can drive the thing uh, with this joystick. Once you turn this off, it goes back into the head control mode and you just have to push the reset switch. 
and now you're set up to drive using this thing. So it's kind of cool having both options available there. Now these head arrays have to be in just the right position. Just the right position for everything to work properly. I've got this set up so I can adjust it just a little bit here. And I've got this switch. The switch is set up so I can hit that with my chin pretty easily. And then it's just left, right, and back. So let's power this thing up. Gotta hit reset with my chin. And there we go, we should be ready to drive. Whoop, <laughs> unintended movement there. So I'm... So what I'm doing, I'm leaning back to go forward, but the chair's not going straight, so I'm just intermittently moving my head left to keep it going straight. If I lean forward, it stops, and now if I lean to the right, it will turn. Uh, yeah, I need to adjust the tracking on this chair a little bit. One of the motors is pulling it to the right. Huh. Okay, well that's gonna need adjustment. And then you move your head forward, it stops. The thing is set up in such a way so that when it doesn't detect input for two seconds, it goes back into standby mode. And that means I have to hit this switch again before it'll let me drive. There we go. Now we can go left, forward. So you can steer while you're going forward. And then if you lean your head forward, it goes into goes into full turn mode. Now this profile I did tune up a little bit, and to be honest, it's it's a little bit sketchy. <laughs> Oop. <laughs> Try not to run into the van. So that's the thing too, you can't lean your head back for support unless you want to actually move unless you want to actually move forward. Oh, actually, okay, all you have to do, so say we're driving, all I have to do is lean forward. After it stops, count to two, and then display goes back into standby mode. So now I can do anything I want with my head, and it's not gonna move again until I hit the switch, and then it starts moving again. Okay, so let's grab one of those SD cards. I wanna play around with a couple other settings. Let's see if I can get over here. I've got the acceleration set um, a little bit weird. Oh, so backing up, um, I have to navigate the menus with my chin to do that. So I'm gonna go chin switch, chin switch, there's reverse. And I hit, hit the uh, chin switch again. And now when I move my head back, the chair will go backwards. Way faster than I wanted. Okay, there's a train. here by the van. Ooh, this thing is way too fast. I'm gonna try and get up on the lift here. Oh! Man, this really takes some getting used to. Onto the ramp here. Ooh! That could have been painful. <laughs> All right, let's grab our SD cards. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the attendant control and use that to back out of here because I don't want to smash my toes. <laughs> We're gonna wait for this train to pass and then, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you what's on these. Okay, so on this first one here, I've tuned down that profile a little bit because it's a wee bit sketchy. And then there's also a mode on profile two that I enabled that's called ASL three speed digital. So I'm curious to see if that will let us modulate our speed or not. Read from card, start reading. Okay, power back off. We'll take this out. And let's see what we get now. Move this thing out of the way. Okay, reset. Oh, interesting. So we have, we have a new logo here. It says D1 through three. So I'm gonna use the keypad and we'll manually go into three here. This should be just the same as it was before, but not quite, but not quite as fast. Maybe a little easier to control. Okay, there we go. Oh, turning speed's still a little bit aggressive. I 
actually let me tilt back a little bit same thing you can navigate through the menus here and now if I lean left it should tilt the chair there we go now we'll go back into drive mode and off we go okay so this is this is being made pretty difficult because this chair is not going straight see how we're turning I have to keep tilting to the left to keep it going straight alright let's try our speed one of three mode I'm really curious to see how this works so reset I'm gonna lean my head back It just says three on the screen. I'm not sure how this works. It's not reset. Maybe you lean forward and then go back? No. Yeah, I don't know how you adjust the speed on that. Maybe it requires another switch. Maybe someone out there knows how this works. I definitely don't. Hmm. All right, we're gonna go back into drive three and we're gonna grab this other SD card because I wanna try the, true, the cruise control. Now this is where things make it interesting. It's latch driving, but I set it to cruise mode. So I don't know if it keeps going until you tell it to stop or how that works, but we're gonna have a bunch of open space here to try this out with. I'm gonna get out here in the middle. Oh, actually the attendant control should be a lot more um, responsive now, let's see. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Speed increasing, it says. Speed latch. Oh! It's moving by itself. Okay, so you lean back until you get to the speed you want, and then it continues going. So if I lean back more now, how do you stop it? Uh, okay, you hit the reset switch to stop. Okay, so you just keep leaning back until you get to the speed you want. Interesting. I kind of like that. So it says speed increasing. Okay, it's not helping that the, um, that the chair doesn't want to go straight. Okay, so I guess I had it set pretty low. But yeah, now the only inputs it'll pay attention to is turning. I can do whatever I want with my head but it'll just continue at this speed. Even if I lean back, it won't do anything. It just keeps driving. Okay, this mode's actually pretty handy. And then you click the switch to stop it. Okay, that's actually a lot better, I like that. Well, I guess I left the profile stock on this one, which means it's only gonna go, I think it's set to 20% speed. The steering is somewhat proportional. If I have my head touching the back and then I lean to the right, it turns slowly. If I lean forward, it turns even sharper. All right. Okay, this is actually really cool. Because I was wondering like for hiking on trails and stuff, uh, what you do. Because trying to hold your head back and bouncing around and all that is like really obnoxious. But okay, this is neat. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to hop on the computer. I'm going to adjust this profile up a little bit more. And I should be able to set the speed to 100%, I believe. The way I think it's working is when you let off, it, it'll stop at the speed you're trying. So let's try that. So forward, I'm gonna let go. Yeah, the second I let go, it stops at that speed. So if we wanna go really slow. Haha. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, and then when I lean back, it increases again up to the max. Oh. Okay, I'm. I'm tempted now at this point to uh, take this thing on a trail run and see how it works. Yeah, I've never gotten to play around with a head array. This is a serial based system, so there's a bunch of different modules and things don't really talk to each other. So I'm thinking on the newer chairs, uh, they might have refined this a little bit better. But again, I don't know anything about this. All you people out there that use these things, let me know your experiences and correct me on all this stuff because uh, I'm trying to learn it. But this latch driving mode is neat. 
I think that concludes the testing for this thing today. Oh, well, for right now. I need to adjust the tracking on this so it goes straight. That's super important. It's making it impossible to drive. So let's turn our attendant control back on here. Go back over to the other chair. I really love learning about new um, technology and stuff like this. Well, it's not new technology, but new to me. Um, I do have another chair that a local viewer gave me that has a chin control. Uh, so we might have to go over that in another video. It's basically one of these small joysticks and then you wear a thing that hangs around your neck and you use your chin to control it. And it has a similar setup. It's a permobile with an Omni and you basically use the same thing and it has the timeouts and everything so you can use the joystick with your chin to navigate all of the functions on the chair. It's the next day. So I've been playing. The washing machine is annoyed apparently. Stop beeping. So I've been playing around with that chair quite a bit. I've done a decent amount of programming on it. And I think I've got it tuned up in such a way that I can control it when I'm outside and want to move it a decent speed. And also indoors for more precise driving as it were. So I'm gonna go hop on the chair right now and we're gonna try and run around inside the house. I have not tried this yet, so it should be interesting to see how this works. Whew, sneezing, allergies and stuff. Um, so I attempted to do a bunch of research to figure out the proper positioning of this headgear. And a lot of the uh, photos and stuff I saw online, people had these sensors way up here, like above their ears. And the chin switch was hanging out down here kind of low so they could hit it like that. Other people had it basically right next to their eyeballs. Now, I'm not sure 100% exactly why they're doing it that way. I'm also not a C4 or 5 quad. Um, I'm technically like C7, but maybe there's something to not being able to move your head as easily. I, I don't know. Again, you guys that use these things, let me know how you have yours set up. But uh, for me, this seems to work good here. I can tilt my head back to hit the rear switch. I can go left, right, actually that was right, left, whatever, and hit that switch there. No problem at all. Um, I would prefer to be able to turn my head and look to see over the top of it. So, again, I don't really know much about this stuff, but I got everything pretty well adjusted, I think. And I did want to have it up here because if I'm wearing a hat or something, that's going to change the amount of movement that it takes to uh, trigger the proximity switches. So, I don't know. Um, let's fire this thing up and run around inside. All right, here we go. Let's see how this works. Now this is the indoor profile that I set up. Um, it's got a little bit of speed just because you have to be able to get up ramps and things like that. And I have not tried this yet. Ooh. These doorways are pretty tight. Ah! Okay, we're going to have to back up a little bit. Okay, there we go. Now we'll go back into drive. This doorway here is especially narrow. No. Okay, there we go. I found that if I had the speed turned down lower than this, I had trouble getting up the ramp. So, it actually might be beneficial to have another profile. Actually, let's see here. I think profile one. Let me see if I can switch to that. This is profile one. So yeah, this is a little bit slower. This is a stock profile for indoor here. So let's try 
and get through this office door down here. We're gonna try and get through this office door back here. I'm fully expecting to smash into things. So this is potentially a little bit fast. Okay, I'll, uh, let's go back to profile one. Okay, there we go. Try and get positioned here. This is like performing some sort of weird surgery. All right, there we go. Boy, this would, this would be a lot more sketchy if I didn't have any trunk control and maybe not as easy to move my head around. But um, hats off to you guys that use these things on a daily basis. Okay, let's uh, go up into the danger mode here. All right. Whee! Ah. Yeah, there's something to be said for the exact positioning of your head array for turning left and right, too. I did get the tracking on this chair fixed, uh, so it actually goes straight now. Oops, just bump the door there a little bit. Now going down a ramp seems like it could be pretty tricky because there's going to be a, quite a bump at the end of it and that's going to affect the position of my head. Okay, yeah, that's actually not too bad. Alright, let's back this thing up a little bit. That's the other thing too, is going backwards, you, like you just can't see behind you, so I don't know. I don't know how that's supposed to work. All right, there we go. We did it, yay. That was nerve wracking. Well, this has been pretty interesting. I'm, I'm glad I've got one of these chairs in the fleet now so that I'm able to do a little bit more testing and maybe figure out programming and learn a little more how these things work. The Arnett controlled chairs, like the Permobiles and whatnot, I know they have a much newer system now. They've got an Omni 2 available. I think it's got like a touchscreen and stuff on it. And I think some of the switching technology and whatnot has gotten better because this chair is probably uh, at least seven years old, something like that. But any of you that use head arrays, um, I'm sure you've got some interesting stories. I've got a couple of friends Actually, both of them use Invacare chairs. One of them has the gearless brushless motor chair, and he's known for doing trips crossing like entire states. And the other one does a bunch of trail rides as well, and neither of them are scared whatsoever to go cruising down gravel roads at speed. So if any of you have any interesting stories, I mean, I'm sure not everyone's out running around in the woods with their head array, but if there's anything that comes to mind or you need to correct me on or just stories that you have, leave a comment down below. I'm super interested in this technology, and uh, yeah, I think we're going to call that good for now. This video is already getting pretty long, so thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in a few days.